Welcome to part three of my upgrade series. Let's get started. What's up guys, I've got some really cool products to unbox and show you in preparation for uh, setting up my case. Uh, in the background you're gonna be hearing my bird um, who uh, just decided to start singing so I guess we have a little soundtrack going for us here. Uh, this is the Corsair H100i. This is a self-contained uh, water cooler that I'm going to be using to cool the uh, Haswell i7-4770K. Uh, if you missed the first two parts of my series, uh, take a look in the description below and I'm going to have a playlist so that you can go check those out. Uh, here, let's uh, go and get into this uh, H100i. Um, I did a lot of research and this was uh, competitively priced and uh, overall was a pretty decent unit. Uh, the one bad thing that I heard about these was um, the fans that come included and, and I've got a solution for that. So in here in the box we got a little product guide, uh, some warranty paperwork and an installation guide which I will be uh, using. Some pretty good uh, foam and then a lot of parts. So we've got mounting hardware, the uh, parts that go on top of the cooler to hold it down. So looks like uh, probably an Intel piece uh, and an AMD piece. And more cable, so this would be for like the Corsair Link um, piece of uh, the water cooler. A couple of uh, fans, which I'm not going to be using. And then this big giant mess here. Wow. Here's what it looks like out of the bag. Uh, you've got some nice thick tubing here. Uh, here's the actual pump uh, that sits on top of the CPU. And uh, copper bottom with uh, the uh, paste pre-applied. Uh, and then you've got the 240 mil rad, which I think my bird likes because he's making a lot of noise there. Um, power is provided via a standard SATA plug which is pretty cool and then there's a uh, fan connector here I guess for fans. The actual unit here uh, on the front, if I can get that around, right here has got uh, some extra plugs for uh, these wires over here. So I'll have to take a look at the instructions and just make sure that uh, I plug everything in right. Here's one of the included fans that uh, come with the cooler. I've seen a lot of comments and in, in reviews that overall uh, these fans aren't that great uh, or at least um, I've seen a lot of people not use these and replace them with something else which is why uh, I decided to get this so these are Corsair fans again but these are their SP120 fans and I got a pair of them in this little package here and they actually look very similar to this with a couple of exceptions so when I take this out, they look pretty much the same, except that these performance fans have these um, rubber grommets or rubber inserts here uh, to help in vibration. Um, and you've got some uh, rubber grommets here for that as well. The other thing that's kind of neat is that these, these rings come off. And then there's some extra ones in the package. There's a white one and a red one. So I'm going to be using the red ones to match with the color scheme in my case. And then the other thing that you get uh, are these um, some screws. And then you actually have this little step down uh, resistor to uh, lower the RPMs of your fan if you don't want them that loud. Let's talk a little bit about my case. This is the Corsair 600T Special Edition White. Uh, this is, a I think, part of their Graphite series. And um, I really, really love this thing. Uh, last night I popped in a movie and I took this entire thing apart. I uh, took out the drive cages, the fans, and I actually took off all these white pieces here so I can just get it down to bare metal. Uh, Corsair uh, really does a nice job in making sure that that's relatively easy to do. I mean, these are all held in with tabs that you can take out. Everything popped out really nicely and I was able to get in with some compressed air and get rid of all the dust that was kind of hiding in all of these crevices. Um, and honestly, there really wasn't a lot of dust. Um, there are some filters, so there's a filter up top, filter here at the bottom for the power supply, and then there's a filter up in the front of the case for uh, the big fan that's here. I just wanted to get it clean, uh, back to brand new, uh, for all the new parts that I'm going to put in. 
First thing to go in the case is going to be the back plate for the motherboard. Uh, this is a nice one because it's black, it's color coded, and you've got this uh, foam, uh, this foil backed foam, which is which is good. Now you want to make sure that it's installed the right way. And I know that on my motherboard, the top, uh, which is going to be facing that way, is uh, the part with the uh, PS2. So uh, this just snaps in. So this will go in this way. And then you just want to press it in and make sure that um, that it works. Now I'm kind of at a weird angle here because I'm trying not to hit the camera. So that goes in like that. Next up is the motherboard. So make sure that when you do this you got a good handle on the board and you're not going to drop it because um, that would be bad. And uh, just make sure that you line up the holes and it's probably easier to come in at an angle um, so that you can find the uh, spots for the backing plate. That's going to help you line things up. And then just gently uh, let it fall down. Now I'm, what I'm looking for is the actual uh, pin that I showed you before to help line stuff up. Now it's actually right here. I'm going to push in just a bit and let it come down. And that way that lines up there and then the rest of these holes line up where they need to go. So I'm going to go ahead and screw these down uh, with the uh, screws that came with the case. Um, and one thing of note is you don't want to crank it down. You just want to tighten it down and make sure that it's secure, but you don't want to tighten it so much that you crack the board. Here's a quick tip. Uh, I like using one of these really long screwdrivers because it lets you uh, get the screwdriver in where you need to go and then you're not banging your hand up against the side of the case. And it's just a hell of a lot easier than using a little tiny screwdriver and then having to fight. Um, you know, with the side of the case and other things in the way. So it'll just help save your knuckles. All right, let's do the water cooler install. Um, I took a look at the instructions. Instructions say to install the radiator first uh, and then the back plate, but I'm gonna do that in reverse. And the reason why is it's gonna be a lot easier to install the standoffs, I think, uh, without having tubing and other stuff in the way. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now here's the back plate that we have to use. And there are four sides this top side here has a notch and that's the part that we want facing up and I know that this is the top of my motherboard. I've got the case flipped over uh, so that I can get to the back and I've got this really convenient um, uh, opening for the back plate so I don't have to, uh, to worry. Got a lot of space to work. Uh, these standoffs um, have some movement here and that's for the different uh, platforms that you can install it on. Just make sure you move it down to uh, where it needs to go and then just install it that way line up the holes and then I'm gonna get underneath and twist in at least one of the standoffs so that I can turn this whole thing over and do it now normally what you would probably do is just have this have the case stand up regular and then just uh, that way it'd be a lot easier for you to get it that way uh, I just wanted to show you what it looks like so I've got the standoffs uh, installed over the back plate and uh, one thing that's a little concerning is how loose that is. I took a minute and uh, did a little research on a couple forums. A lot of people have been saying that uh, they think this is a problem, uh, but as it turns out, uh, once you install the uh, CPU block on top of this and then cinch everything down, that should tighten up. So I'm hoping that that's going to be the case for us here. Uh, if not, I'm going to have to take a trip to the hardware store and get some uh, like nylon washers to uh, tighten that up. But let's see how it goes. Let's set the radiator up. Uh, it's going to be easier, I think, to do it outside uh, as opposed to installing it first and then trying to mount the fans kind of upside down. Uh, so picture the top of the case this way, the back that way, and that's how it's going to go like that with the tubes routed that way. And we're going to mount the fans like that. So here and here. And I'm making sure that the power for the fans uh, or the cables for the power is going that way pointing down so I don't want to do something say like that uh, so that I don't have any cables going this way which uh, would not be optimal uh, you get some long screws in the box these go through here so we'll get that set up well I ran into a problem not an impossible one but still a problem uh, radiator with the fans Go to mount it here, 
But the problem is, is that the bottom of the fans hit actually the top of the memory and the top of the heat sink on the motherboard, so I can't get the radiator in place uh, for the screws. So what I'm going to have to do is take the fans off altogether and then just mount them up in the top. So there's a nice cavity on the top and uh, I can get the fans there, have the radiator on the inside of the case, that'll clear everything, uh, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so I switched the configuration. The fans are now on this side and the radiator installs like that. No clearance issues at all in that setup. And if I move the case around, you can see the fans right there. Okay, let's get the CPU block installed. I'm running out of battery, so I'm hoping to get this done quickly. Um, so I peeled off the protective plastic up on the top and uh, there goes the bottom. Uh, of the thing so we need to get that done anyway so that's okay uh, this plate will sit on top and the nice thing is that once you have it fit on top you see it snapped in there because there's magnets underneath and that's pretty neat uh, I'm kinda going with the bend of the tube I don't want to kink the tubing at all um, so this is just sort of the natural bend and I'm making sure that the logo is upright because I know that'll bother the hell out of me if it's not and then this just sits on top of the stands like that so there's some thumb screws that they provide which we will tighten down and I'm hoping that that is going to um, take care of that slack that I showed you before okay here's the CPU block installed a couple of notes here um, the back plate did cinch up nicely once I had everything tightened up so that's a good thing um, make sure that when you install these screws that you don't over tighten them and you want to make sure that you do them in a cross pattern so that um, you get even pressure on the CPU uh, when you do the install. There is a couple of cables left to plug in so there's uh, power and then there's the actual Corsair Link cable itself. This is going to get routed behind the motherboard and then plug into a uh, free USB plug on the motherboard. But other than that I think we're all set with this part of the video. Definitely like and subscribe, that's going to help me out a ton. Uh, we've got probably another couple parts left to go to finalize the project, but I think it's turning out really well. So, thanks for watching guys, see you next time.